I know 50 Cent fired me like 50 times, but I never got. You can turn it on. This is like a old school hood anthem. This is like Muhammad Ali used to walk in the ring to this. Uh, what's my man? Uh, Larry Holmes. You know, uh, Reverend Al, before he give any speech, that song come on. And I just felt like playing the shit. And I can't. And so it's just a vibe. And uh, tragically, that's crazy that the creator of that positive record there, uh, I believe he died gunned down in Philly. And that, that, that's even crazy. The most positive songwriter in the world. Um, they from Philly, real hood classic. Yeah, you right. Um, we here. It's the big, big show. I feel a little weird. I, uh... I'm moving locations. I'm building a new crib. Thank God. Alhamdulillah. And uh, and so I can't take shit from the old crib to the new crib. And uh make sure, make sure, make sure uh I'm not paused. Cause it's saying I'm paused. I am? And if it says pause, be right back. Yo, you paused. So I'm paused? Yo. So who can, let me ask you, ride around with your mask on by yourself? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm in Tampa Bay. Like, it's the Super Bowl shit. Everybody's out here tongue kissing each other like, with, with COVID and, you know. If I gotta kiss a girl, man. I gotta cover my face. You know, she kiss outside the shit. You know what I'm saying? Would you have sex with the mask on? Hell yeah. No, real yeah. talk, right? I I think I think that would be more safe because you know, juices is going everywhere. You know, liquids, moisture. It's just like all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. You're getting too graphic with the shit. Too much detail. Hey, yo, oh, who kid? My man, the living legend, G Units own. Uh, you'll be the G G Units own first DJ, right? Yeah, I, I was a, I was in in the beginning where I was making like one hundred fifty dollars a show. We had like we had like one hundred eighty shows in a row. So I you was in mixtape, mixtape fifty. Yeah, the, the mixtape tour. So you know, back then, it looked it, it sounded kind of cheap. But if if, if if you see it, if if you add it up, I, I looked at it as as if I added it up. So one hundred fifty times sixty shows, that was a good little bag, you know. Especially yeah, when, but in any case, it was it was just a step closer to where you at now, where you got your own show, you get your own money. Uh, you know, Cali got the shit where he say. That no deal he's done is like a bad deal. Even if it was technically a bad deal, it got him to where he's at today. You know, so think I don't about think it. that was bad. I think you put in your work so you could get your real bag. I just got a um, phone call, like literally before I got on with you from Paul Rosenberg, uh, thanking me. And in case that people are under a rock, that's Eminem's manager. I survived uh, today's actually my 16 year anniversary on Sirius XM K45. So I survived. I didn't get fired. I know 50 Cent fired me like 50 times, but I never got fired. You never left. Oh. Now you the type you never left. You know, I got guys I fired that just ain't leave. Yeah. It's like, you know, I got fired 48 times to be exact. I thought maybe two more would be like a cliche because it's 50, 50. But I got fired so much on the road, but it was hard to find a DJ that could cover a two-hour set. So I kind of like... And so who kids? So you like, you don't give a fuck, G-Unit, boom! We could get the shit and pop it, pop, pop, boom! And you went in and there's money and chains, spinning chains, all type of shit. Um, but were you like really, really uh, like, I, went, I don't want to use the word scared, but did you... Really watch yourself because th this man is just a time bomb and he had beef 
with every American in the game. <laughs> yeah, it was it was kind of. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It, 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 I mean, I think I was already desensitized because a lot of people don't know. I used to DJ for like Capone Noriega, so I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I was their DJ first, and then I DJed for uh, uh, Juvenile from Cash Money. Mm. But there wasn't really no beef or shootouts at that time. But I left Juvenile, then I went to Capone Noriega, so I was torn with Capone Noriega. Yeah, but you've been, you've been, you've been in some scary moments though. Like you, yeah, been, like you've been and, in some shit. Like oh shit, it's about to go down for real. Like, 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 I toured with with my deep. We 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 toured with my deep. So you can imagine, like, every time shook ones came on, shootouts, people getting killed, shot. So I was the I was the 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 speaker guy. Like I, I knew how to like hide in between speakers and uh, like I, like like. But I was I was in a speaker one time. Like, like you know, I tell everybody when the shit pop off. Yeah. I don't care if you're the nicest guy in the crew. You gotta you gotta be in there. Because it's the guys that try to sneak off quietly that they catch. Exactly. And they beat them up. It, it, your best bet is to stay with your crew and and try to thug it out. Like my DJ LV, he been in riots. But I always <laughs> told him, your LV, he's the nicest guy in the world. Mm. I said, your LV, well, my, my former DJ, I'll be your LV. If you sneak off, they're going to catch your ass. Just stay next to us. And you know, because don't sneak off. <laughs> One day I walked outside, they was beating LV up. I oh, ran nah. over there so fast and started. Nah, because LV don't deserve it. He's the nicest guy in the world. He didn't deserve it, man. He, he's Bro. seen some shit fucking with us. But you, but you know what it is? It's, it's a form of desensitization, so... If I come from Capone Noriega and I've witnessed a million shootouts, people getting beat up, I already have like this matrix um, reaction to like if there's a shootout, like being a DJ is cool because you see the full three, you know, 160, whatever, 360 of the room. You see everybody running, but I see if I if I physically see the guy shooting at one direction, why do I need to run? I don't need to run no more. But everything slows down when you actually see like. The no, I run. I run the other way. Yeah, right? but pe but most. No, I had a, I, You know, they 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 try to like. One time I was in front of a club and some dudes had a shootout. Mm. Bro, I ran up the block. And the <laughs> police came to me like if it had something to do with me. I was like, bro. I heard pow pow pow, and I ran 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 that way. <laughs> like, fuck, am I supposed to do? Run to it to see what's going on? Like. <laughs> I'm Hug gone. A bullet. <laughs> but it, 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 it's it's crazy when you come from like hanging with Capone and Noriega and that crew was reckless. You know the whole fucking Iraq and the niggas was out of their mind over there. So I went from them to Fifty Cent, where I've seen people like you know get rid of that trying when you see the dead body in the back. Like that shit happened on the road. You know what I'm saying? And then mm. the, the promoter was like, yo. If, if if you don't perform tonight, it's gonna be more dead people. So they were doing an investigation, and we still performed while the while the tape was in the back. It had nothing to do with us. It's just random gangster shootings or whatever. But we really had to do a sold out show, or it would have been a shootout. But then it. But if, if, if you, you know, people that, don't understand. People don't understand that. I mean, I love it. I'm a gangster rapper. But when we make that kind of music, and we go to a little town. They want to prove they as tough as New York. Yeah. And they really want to turn up. But that's why you created that click. Like, you know, we had like 20 niggas with us. You you got like 30, 20, and one tour bus. And the thing about 50 Cent, he would literally like whoever gets on the tour bus first is is gonna get a bed. If you don't if you get there late, you're sleeping on the floor, you're sleeping on the couch. 50 Cent would sleep on the couch. That's how humble he was. It wasn't like Cause he had like you know we had like some grimy crazy, yeah, you have to. Cause if you go to North Carolina, you go to Connecticut, you go to like Rhode Island, like niggas is gonna test you. But if they see that you're immediately with 30, 40 heads, you gotta think twice. And that's one tour bus, bulletproof vest. Everybody had a vest. I know Terror Squad was not into. I mean, you guys were very vicious back then. But imagine like you see like. 25 guys on stage with bulletproof vests that, you know, like the 
we call it the bullet resistant ones like you know the we call them we call that shit yeah like the, like some detective shit like the shit will stop like and i had a vest like when i got hired they gave me a vest like 50 cent gave me a bulletproof vest because because it's literally after he got shot I had to, I literally had to have a meeting with the guy, like you know. And then Sean Money was like, "Yo, you gotta go check him out. You gotta go see." Him. I was, and I was more worried because he got shot in his face and all that. So I thought I was gonna see like a zombie. You know, you'd be seeing like Walking Dead, like uh, 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 like you know. I, I was like, "Yo, I hope this nigga face ain't fucked up." But when I met him, I couldn't believe it was just a dimple, and he looked like he looked great. And then you know, he, he did ask me. You know, he's gonna ask me three questions before we go on the road. He was like, "Yo." If niggas come at you with, you know, with guns, you know, if, if they come at me and they're trying to kill me, what would you do? And I told him, yo, man, I really don't know you, but I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is my first time meeting him. So he was like, yo, I don't have to ask you the other two. You're hired. Because now that I know, you know what I'm saying? Now I know how to maneuver. If niggas is coming at me, I know how to maneuver now with people around. If I would have been like, yo, I'm going to stop the bullets. I'm going to jump. I'm going to pull out. You know, I'll just be you like. You been like, you full of shit or he yeah. would have gave you the strap. You, you you don't have to be tough in this game. You just got to be smart, and you know, I'm already desensitized, so I have no fear of fucking with Fifty. You know, like shout I'm, out to TT Torres on the check in. And the thing about you, even though we had uh, history, I love your show, man. I used to listen to you every fucking weekend yeah. on Sirius. You didn't know, but I was I was a fucking who kid fan. Your show is so fucking crazy, bro. <laughs> That's why even this weekend, you know, like you're on it. Like, you know, I, I got like countless people, Hulk Hogan, random people just hanging out. It's like 15 people in a row. Roddy Rich, this guy, that guy. But it's good to, I learned from radio from Howard Stern. Ever since like, I think I'm like the only mixtape DJ that I ever got on Howard Stern. Probably Khaled went on there, but I'm the only mixtape like, random dj to do it for an hour where he wouldn't like he just was flabbergasted that's what i would that I believe I, I believe like you you i would listen to you like if i was listening to howard stern just a, yeah. a hip-hop howard stern and who's the white boy you had down with you which one back then uh dan the man I like dan, dan the man, man. <laughs> that guy was like he was special man <laughs> it's like the black guy the jewish guy you know, I try to cover the full hip hop spectrum where you got the, you know, the educate. I mean, I'm educated in a certain way too, but I needed like a, a geeky, you know, answer where it comes to like if me and him is interviewing you, it'll be double sided. You understand? Like I understand you, but he'll understand you in a different way. But I knew you were a fan because when you came up there, you know, usually I'd be having like butt naked chicks and all kind of but you knew get, i knew like, i was like yo i can't do the butt naked chicks yeah. <laughs> i told you yo i can't i've been hearing the type of shit y'all talk about up there i said yo i can't <laughs> he can't play with me like i can't do that like, <laughs> i had like samuel jackson one time but I, I i'll always get samuel jackson out before like i literally had like 22 strippers literally outside butt naked ready to go all they had was jackets but they're naked but i told but i i, I kind of like rush samuel jackson because i don't want samuel jackson to be involved with the ratchet shit you know what i'm saying of course not man yeah, yeah. I mean, i'm sure he wish he could be but he was out of that motherfucker but from that show that you're a fan of you know cardi b used to strip there every like every week i had cardi b up there you know what i'm saying that's crazy so you got footage of that yeah, I got video, photos, everything. And then I remember when she came back, out of respect for, you know, uh, Offset, you know, she was pregnant, so I had to interview her. So I really, like, stayed away from all, like, you know, the stripper beginnings and shit like that. But Cardi B is so cool and humble. Like, at the end of the interview, we did a great interview. Everything went great. And she was like, yo, who kid? What the fuck? I was like, what do you mean, what the fuck? She said, yo, you think I don't remember this shit right here? And then she pushed the, she pushed the chair pregnant and started twerking this is my shit this is where i started wow, yeah, wow. So it's kind of like, like crazy i love crazy. a new single she got a new single called up that i'm really feeling it the video's fire too that shit is fucking ridiculous man but it's like yeah. you know even like with stations and music like you know it, it, it's funny how i had to balance out hanging with 50 cent who disses everybody 
And I ended up, you know, I did everybody's mixtape prior to 50 Cent. From the Nazis to the, I mean, he kind of made up with most of the people he killed. You know what I'm saying? But it just was rough for me. Like, you know, I used to hang with Nas all the time. Like, but I just, I, I had to be loyal. I had to, I had to pick the side that, you know, that gave me my shot, you know? And, and, and there's no disrespect to Nas, but I have to be loyal. So a lot of people always wonder why who could, you know, be, be bugging or he'll be over there. But, you know, loyalty lasts longer. You, look, at, you look at your success. You know, it's crazy that you're talking about this, right? Because since the COVID, I never even knew what the hell YouTube was, right? But the COVID, the COVID since the COVID, I watched YouTube. And I don't know if it's just my YouTube, but YouTube consists of a bunch of guys that used to be affiliated mm. with other rappers and rappers, say a former Terror Squad member, former G Unit member, yeah. former Rockefeller, former, and these guys, because most likely they took the wrong path and they made the wrong choice. Now their new, uh, their new shit is dissing whoever they used to be with. And, and, and it's a whole community of these guys. <laughs> no, I swear to God, volume ones, volume 25s. And it's just, and loyalty, I don't understand. Like, my thing is, I've been robbed, I've been jerked, mm. I've been done wrong. Bro, a man just stays quiet. Either you deal with that, you stay quiet, you move on. And you get some more money and you do whatever. It's amazing to see grown men, grown men though. These are like grown men on YouTube talking about like they hate these rappers and these rappers and this and this and I used to be with them and I'm... I'm like, yo, these guys, like, their whole life will be based on shitting on a guy who put them on or whatever the case may be. It's crazy, man. Loyalty is rare, but it's only right. And, and, and you know, me, like, looking outside being in the, the original members of G-Unit, like, it, it started with four, and obviously, you know, Buck came in and then game and everything but I never understood like I mean I'm sure you know this too I never understood like the 30 40 heads around us like people that have nothing to do with us like whatever 50 cent friends had back in the days I understand and it makes sense but people that are not really friends like they got like G-unit tattoos and all this crazy shit like they, they're just so thirsty that they, they would get the tattoo it's not like a fan that goes to the concert that's really into the music, and you got a junior tattoo. I'm talking about like dudes that just dying to just come near us, and and then I I asked like Fifty Cent finally, yo, can I get the Gina tattoo? Which I don't really think I needed to ask. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to ask that, but I feel like that's the proper way of doing it. Like when I was hanging with Gucci Man and Waka Flocka, like I asked like the whole family, Waka's moms, like before I got you know, the the, the, the the tattoo on the back of my neck. Like, I can't just be like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just, Maybe I look at it different. I don't know. But if, if, if I fuck with you, Fat Joe, I would ask you for the niggas that you fuck with. Yeah, that we used cool. to beat up a guy all the time. But it's just weird I don't know if how... I want to say his name, but we used to beat up a guy all the time, and I what? actually love him now. Like, I, I, I love him. Yeah, yeah, I love him. He's... He, 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 He's become a friend of the family. He, he he looks after my mother and father, but he got a Terror Squad tattoo. This is when it was like active on it popping. And he walks up in the store we own with a Terror Squad tattoo. And we like, who the fuck is you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't do him like that. <laughs> and I remember we used to drive him around. Uh, many years ago, guys, we... Uh, Smack him up a little, you know, like, what, what the fuck are you doing, man? And then, mm. but over time, he deserves it. And he wound up being one of the best guys. I love him like a brother. I'm not going to lie to you. But I remember it was a fence. And rest in peace, my brother Flex. Like, so me, to me, Terror Squad, 
is more than rap. Mm. The Mike Bibby, the ball player, is Terror Squad. Mm. Uh, Stephon Marbury's Terror Squad. Uh, huh? John Beeson football. Uh, we got chefs, barbers. All of us is Terror Squad. Mm. And so when you look around, you be like, damn, they got about 100 guys with TS pieces all over. Because it's everybody is Terror Squad. And everybody plays a different position. You understand? But my man Flex, rest in peace, who's my manager for 20 years, he's not here no more. Flex would run down on somebody I gave a terror squad piece and take it off him in broad daylight. Like, yo, bro, you ain't TS. Who gave you this? Be like, yo, I'm, I'm Fat Joe's barber. Fuck <laughs> out of here. You ain't putting no work for this. And then I go and then I have to get it back from Flex. Flex wasn't robbing him. Mm. Lex was making money, but he had a problem with people calling themselves T.S. To me, T.S. is more than hip-hop. It's, it's, it's a lifestyle. And right. everybody plays their position. We got guys in our crew that are barbers. That mm. when it's time to get your face, your, your hate cut, they come cut you. T.S., chefs, this, that. We all want, like, one giant, giant family reunion. Mm. But Flex, he had a problem with it. He had, like, and I'm sure y'all had somebody in G-Unit that had a problem with people pulling up with G-Unit tattoos and all that. Yeah, we, it, it's like family members or people that worked hard to, to create, like, a value to be down makes sense. But I'm talking about, like, the dick riders and, like, they're out for one thing. They just want to be near you to make money or they just want clout or they want, you know what I'm saying? Like, those kind of guys are so pitiful that, and I would talk to 50. I'd be like, yo, 50, man. Why this guy got a Gita tattoo? He don't really like, what's he doing here? You know what I mean? Fuck with us. Like, like, but 50 be laughing though. That's why I be cracking ah. the fuck up. He be laughing at that shit. He be like, yo, man. Yeah, I'll you tell like, you a crazy like, story, you know? right? I went uh, Pretty Lou. Shout out to Pretty Lou. He needs you for his championship. He's looking for you, Pretty Lou. Oh, you know, man. he got this DJ show. He's your championship. Yeah. He, told me, he told me to let you know. Oh, let me know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm D. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Pretty Lou, we needed A Boogie on his single like four or five years ago, three, four years ago. So A Boogie is performing at the Nokia Theater, right? Bro, I walk in there one day, right? Walk in there, I don't even think you was with me. I walked in, you was with me? I walked in there like one deep, right, with, with Rich. And he was in the room playing the video game. And this is the youngest Bronx dude popping A Boogie. He just started popping Mm. And when I go in the room, I see niggas that used to be in the green room when me and Pun used to, like, I'm talking about me and Pun. Damn. Like, like the groupie dudes that used to be, you know, following me and Pun when we was performing. I'm talking about 20 years ago. <laughs> what? And they in the room hanging out with A Boogie and, and, What's crazy is these people think they're from the industry. If you ask their family, what do they do? <laughs> they, they're the industry. They think they're the industry. Yo. Or, <laughs> nah, yo. No, I'm serious. Like, they'll tell you they're from the industry or something. Um, Man, these guys been dick riding for 20 years. Like, I could not believe it. Speak, I walk speak. in there, I look at these guys, I was like, yo, this is amazing to me. And you, I, <laughs> you know what's really amazing? Tw like, 20 years, like, on another, like, subject, like, we would go overseas, and I, I would never understand why some chicks don't get married or start a life. I'd be like, bitch, we've been coming back here, like, 15 years. You still a groupie? You still sucking niggas off? You still oh, fucking? man, that's like... I would be like... Who are you? Why are you still here? Like, niggas is like, like 15 years. It is the same. I'm like, you never got married? You never like, it's, it'd be German, the same German chick. You go to London. We had, this, we, we, we had a chick. Every little London. where we go. Yo, every we little city we go. Yo, I we, see the same hoes. Every little city we go. Yo, we, we, we had a chick in London that was like the cleaner. Like, she would clean everybody. Like, you know, I, I don't know. I'm good. I had a girl, but she's like the cleaner. You know what I'm saying? Like, she you had know, like the uh, Uzi belt. Man, you know I don't know if I should go into that, but, <laughs> you know, 
you know, Miami's a hot spot, you know, so everybody move here and they tell them don't catch the Miami bug or it could fuck yeah. up your life. You could lose your family. And um, and so I used to go to the club every single night, seven days a week. Seven days a week, I'm in the club popping bottles with the crew. And I see the same girls. These guys, one night they were these rappers. Wow. The next night they were these rappers. The next night they were these, the same crews. These guys and, and these guys and these guys and, and, and um, and I guess, I, you know, I, I guess they'd rather do that than be with Pablito the mechanic or something. Like, <laughs> Want to say they, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. I got to tell you, like, the ultimate funny story with, with Pistol Pete, man. This is, yo, this what shit is wild. What happened with Pistol Pete, man? Yo I, I, I went, yo, I went to go pick up my jewelry, right? the diamond district right so my jeweler like i had like issues with one of my diamonds so i guess he's like fixing it or or it, it was already fixed i was going to pick it up so I, I went to pick up my watch my chain and i had like another big i had another big giant chain so i was picking all that up that day so what's the, the, the jeweler goes in the back you know uh, uh i'm like yo i'm trying to like signal him like because pistol pete comes in and me and him had to got the same jeweler i just figured it out we both got the same jeweler so i i see pistol pete so i'm trying to tell this nigga don't come out with my i'm trying to signal him don't come out with my jewelry because i don't want pistol pete to see like <laughs> you I, I tell don't, him don't bring out the jewelry like you're like yeah, i'm like i'm like this like please. like yo because he you know he this idiot didn't tell me that pistol pete's coming too so i'm trying i'm trying i'm trying to like wave at this nigga, right? And then this nigga brings out my shit. So now Pistol Pete comes next to me, right? Like, literally side by side. And then Pistol Pete's, like, looking at my shit. Like, you know, he's just looking at my shit. Yo, that shit's fire, old kid. Like, so then he, he puts his hand on my shoulder. And then, and then, and then I'm like, yo, man, I, I don't know what's going to happen right now. So he's like, you know what, who kid? You a good guy, man. So he tapped me again. He gave me, like, two more taps on my shoulder. You know what, who kid? You know what? You're really a good guy, man. So then he yeah, you got away. Did he take the shit or he let you go? No, he left. He 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 left right Ooh. after he was on the phone. He, he, he was Love, on the phone. Yeah, he loves you, who kid. Yo, he was on the phone and then I'm I'm like, damn, he's like probably calling the cars to come to the front and waiting for me to come out. So he leaves, right? He leaves. So I call my brother, I call like an uncle that was nearby. I call like like 16 people to beat me. Cause you know, it's like it's like five o'clock in Times Square. You know how much traffic. No, you is? gotta do it. You got. Yo. You know that happened to me one time. Uh, I mean, we talking a lot, who kid? But I knew this was gonna be this type of thing. We about to light God, praising God and, and yeah. positivity. But you know, with who kid and Fat Joe, you know we gotta talk that shit. Mm. Um, and so we beat this guy up one time, like actually twice, right? And he's like. He's no joke. Like he's mm. he's known as, you know, he's a shooter, to say the least. Oh wow! Right, but both times we just I just jumped on him, you know. Immediately when I seen him, I just gave it to him. So, uh, one day, bro, I'm in Fort Lauderdale, and I know he's probably gonna hear this story, right? <laughs> I'm in Fort Lauderdale. I used to live in Fort Lauderdale. I'm going up to New York. Yo, bro, I got sandals on. No. Straight slides. <laughs> right? No, no, it's a true story by myself. Right? So, but I'm I'm really, really not pussy, who okay, At yeah. all. Like, I'm being honest with you. I've taken, I've taken slumber party ass whippings. I let them light me up. I, I'm going yeah. out. Like, they're just going to beat the shit out of me. Right? It's not yeah. a problem. There's hey. actually integrity in that. And so, all of a sudden, my body, I got, like, this thing with me. My body is telling me something's wrong, like something ain't comfortable, right? <laughs> so I look up. This dude walks up. It's about six of them cock diesel, like they eat iron. <laughs> Yo. No, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, all of them is diesel. All of them, right? And I'm just that big, right? So 
When I see him, I said, yo, this that guy. But I said, yo, this this the guy we gave it to him. We gave it to him twice, though, who okay, right? So I go, all right, cool, but I got sandals on. I don't even got sneakers on. Y'all I'm fucked up, right? And so I go, uh, I get my ticket. They went before me. They got their ticket. They go around the corner like if you going to TSA. Mm. I turn around the corner. Boom. They standing right there. Wow. What the fuck? So, you know, the dude's like, he said, yo, can I talk to you? I'm, I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, I'm ready to get it popping with the, with the sandals. Okay, like, I, like, you ain't playing me, pussy, bro. Like, you, it, like, like, it is what it is, right? So I'm like, yo, what's up? He's like, nah, 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 nah. I'm just, I don't want no problems no more. This, he had, he could have got me bad. He had the upper hand, who kid, like you never seen. So he said, yo, I don't want no problems no more. Like, and, and, and could you tell, could you tell the squad if they see me, it's no more smoke, right? <laughs> yeah. And so I look at the kid and I said, I said, all right, you know, we won both times. So I was like, it's like, we all right, don't worry about it, bro. I get on the plane. This nigga is sitting right next to me. Like uh, A1, yeah. A2. What? Right? No, it's a true story. So one thing Fat Joe never does in the history of mankind, it's going to go back to your story with mm. Pistol calling your uncle. I never, ever give a distress call. Wow. That day, I hit pistol with them. And I said, bro, I land at four. <laughs> <laughs> what? American Airlines, bring the animals. <laughs> now, I gave the guy my word. Mm. It wasn't like I was going to double cross him, but maybe this guy, this guy's a killer. And a legend killer. And he knows I'm on his plane. He knows I'm not strapped. What if mm. he double crosses me and he tells some some dudes, yo, we landed in LaGuardia at 410. Get oh, it's over. Yeah, it's over. Yeah. I don't know. Right? So I make the phone call. Who could, when I tell you that I get off this plane <laughs> and go to bed, and the whole flight, homeboy sitting there, no problem, smiling, this, no problems. <laughs> right? I felt like a piece of shit, but I had to protect myself. Yeah. Yo, who kid, when I get off that plane, I'm like, thank God. They had to be about 500 dudes. What? In that baggage claim. I mean, <laughs> hanging off the lights. Oh. Salivating. Yo, when I tell you, they brought the guys that never leave my projects. Out. The ones yeah. that can't wait. <laughs> to do something for Fat Joe. Hell so I yeah. walk out and they're like, where you at God? Where you at God? Where you at God? Where you at? Like they doing all that. Oh, them wild Puerto Rican niggas. Black. Oh, they, Puerto oh, Rican. What? <laughs> yeah, it's the Vietnam crew. Listen, they from Vietnam. Listen, God, where you at? Like, yo, I mean, screaming. Like they could have did like a, where God? Where they couldn't believe Fat Joe made the distress call, right? Wow. So the dude goes, he leaves his bags and he walks straight out, <laughs> right? And so I feel like a little piece of shit because I squashed it with him. Yeah. But I didn't know, you know. So two minutes later, my phone rang, and all people was Chris Gotti. Oh my God. So Chris Gotti calls me and says, Yo, Joe, what's up? And I said, what you mean, what's up? He said, man, you seen homeboy such and such. Y'all squashed everything. Everything was great. And he gets off the plane. There's a thousand niggas out there, like, <laughs> hanging off the walls. <laughs> I said, listen. I said, listen. I said, yo, Chris, tell that dude I will never have a problem with him again in my life. I didn't know, Chris. I explained it to him. I'm flying in. I don't know if this guy... You know, because we beat him up. 
twice. Bad. <laughs> Bad. So I'm thinking like he's is his revenge. I'm not gonna let nobody catch me out there, but I ain't let nobody, but I left it alone. Mm. And after that, I seen the guy a couple of times, showed him love, bought him a little bottle of champagne and starlets or something. It's been love. But I do know, I do know about calling the 16 cousins. Nah, but it's funny you brought up Chris Gotti because I, I got on the sink. You know, Chris Gotti was in business, so I, I had to, like, go in the back and shit. So I, I'm getting on the plane, and I see Chris Gotti. Chris Gotti sees me and shit. So I'm like, so I may believe I was just fake calling niggas. Like, I, I grabbed my phone. <laughs> I got like I was calling somebody, right? Because we both had to land in JFK. So I was like, yo, this might be this might be the time that Murder Inc. could get 50s DJ or some stupid shit, right? But it's Chris Gotti, you know what I'm saying? Chris Gotti, you know, he's more like, you know, I guess he's more like, you know, smart with the shit or adult. Like, he, he reacts like an adult, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I didn't want to take no chances, but I, I had to make believe I was tough, tough. So I grabbed my phone, and I, I'm acting like I'm calling niggas too. So I wanted him to think that maybe I'm calling G the niggas like, yo, oh, yeah, yo. I bought the same flight with Chris Gotti. So the funny thing is, you know, I'm in the back, but he's in business. But you know when you when you like just like you peep up the the seat to look up, yo, his head peeped. Out. I was like, oh shit, like it was like the weirdest shit. Like, well, I guess when I landed, he left. I left. It was all good, you know what I'm saying? But that 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 whole murder ink shit, man, it's just like Ti. Ti is crazy, man. Ti T. invited me. You were there. Ti invited me to the J Lo. You know J Lo do the concerts in the Bronx. That, oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did that annual shit. So Ti is there, you know. Y'all fuck with Ti. So Ti calls me. And he's like, "Yo, who can come fuck with me? I'm out here with J Lo, bro, bro. You know, I, I know J Lo. I'm like, yo, all right, I'm coming over there. But I didn't even think about it. That you know, it's you the ain't Bronx. think Irv Gotti was there, bro? Dalo. You put me in a golf cart. Remember, I was in a golf cart. Yeah, it was I'm, in the golf cart. I'm looking ahead, right? I'm looking ahead, and I'm like, yo, tip, man. Like, what, 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 yo, do you know that Ja Rule, fucking Herb Gotti, like, it was like the lines then. Like, even with you, it was like, you know, it was, it was sus, I don't, you know, it was like if and whatever. Yeah, so but was, with me, it was already squad. Yeah, but still, it's like, you know, it was like me <laughs> going into, it was like me going, T.I. was like, what? You still got beef? I was like, nigga, this nigga Ja Rule is always going to have beef, man. You bring it. You bringing me to the lines then, man. Like, and T.I., you know, Tip is crazy. Yo, I got a knife. I got you. But, you know, Tip, he'll protect me. You know, Tip is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's more, he's on that loyalty shit, like, to the highest degree. So he's like, you know what? Nobody's going to touch you. Don't worry about it. But I was more embarrassed that Fresh Montana and Khloe Kardashian started laughing because, you know, at that they, they saw me. They were like, real French was like, what are you? Doing it like he's laughing and shit, and that fucking the most embarrassing ending was J Lo coming out. Yo, don't touch who kill me. I, I mean, I don't want J Lo like you know. So I don't want J Lo protecting me. It was mad embarrassing, dog. I, I know, was, like, I know, I know. Came out, it was like don't touch who kill, please. And I had to go to the front with Chloe and watch the show, like, cause I couldn't be back then. It was, uh, it was like a lion's den, nigga. It was like let me, let me tell you something, yo. Who kid? The other day, Ebro was on here. And uh, he tried to play me. He tried to play me, right? So we had a beautiful interview like me and you were having the whole time laughing, joking. And then he said, you know why I came on here? It's because I heard you was talking about me one day like you was. So I told him, he bro. No, 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 no. But, you know. So I said, he bro. Like, you know, if it wasn't for Beckhouse, you know, you. I been would have gave it to you. Like I'm, I, Like, I'm letting him know. Like, he knows it. I tell him in his face. Wow. And, but he's a great guy, right? No, real talk. He's a great no, he's guy. A great, he, you know, he's my ex-boss, you know? I, mean, no, I have no boss. problems with Ebro in the world. Yeah. But he tried to, like, put his chest out, and then I got to put my chest out. Mm. And so I said, yo, Ebro, I said, don't make me go into white van talk. And so he was like, Oh, white van talk? I said, yo, don't let me go into the van talk. Because <laughs> he said, well, I ain't never been in the, in, in the white van. I heard of it. But I said, well, we had your face vinyl wrapped on the whole fucking van. <laughs> like, right? And, I, wow. and, and so the next day, he, he roasted me on Hot 97. Yo, Joe was trying to talk tough. Yo, you know, all right, cool. 
Ebro, uh, this reminds me of the 21 anniversary of Punch, so it was 20 years ago. How did it go about, what was your experience in the van, and was it a white van? Yes, it was. And oh, was shit. Oh, motherfuckers. Oh, God damn it. Oh, oh. Hell oh, yeah. It was, it was a white van, and, and, it, and it was like, oh. there was only one seat back there where Pun was at. I can tell you, clear. I remember that shit clear as day. Like, and I tried, I tried to back up, but Pun hooked it up where in order for me to back up, from my friends could see that I was in distress, like, it would have been like, I would have to go really far back. But by the time, you know, when when, when you see, like, the, 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 the sliding doors open and you see pun with a gun, you see, like, everybody pull out. I just closed my eyes, but my hands went down. So they probably thought I was going for something. You know, I, pun didn't know who I was. You know what I'm saying? I yelled at it. You know, I yelled at him on the phone, but I thought pun was a promoter. I, I yeah, he gassed you to come show up. Yeah, he was doing band from TV. He was shooting a music video. And then, you know, everybody was there. And it's funny because Nori was there. Nas, everybody in that video was there. Like, and the pun is like, yo, we out of here. We got to go see this Who Kid guy. Like, but they thought DJ Who Kid was DJ Clue. They thought Clue had an alias. So if I didn't show up to the Apollo that night, they were going to see Clue on Monday night. How do you so, get out of there? Pun let me go after I mean after he talked to me. You know the the respect factor that I have for Pun is he already assumed that I honestly did not know what was going on. Like I was just leaking songs. I was just like I'm not like on Jay Z side. I'm not I'm not with Rockefeller. I'm not like. But he he did tell me like if this continues, then you know you know what you know what you're doing now. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So he said, like, you know what you're doing now. So He gave you a disclaimer and said, if you violate again. Now you know, I know. Was, uh, shout out my brother 50. Pun was really upset when 50 did the how to rob and said, yeah. he'll rob Pun. He don't need a gun. He'll just run. Yo, <laughs> yo Pun was tight. He was, <laughs> yo, he was tight. Bro, he that. was, yo, my dumb ass, you know. You know, back then I was I wasn't really making no money, so I thought I was meeting a promoter to DJ with Flex, in in somewhere in Jamaica Avenue. So I had to go get the money. I had to go get a thousand dollars. Remember, I was I told you I was getting hundred fifty a show. So yeah. this guy was like, "Yo, Pun told me I got a thousand dollars for you, you know, and it's gonna be with Flex." So that's why when I got there, I saw the white van. The white van looked like it was kind of hooked up. It looked like you know the car show, Flex shit. So I thought Flex was cool. Okay, kid, don't be mad, man. A lot of a lot of people took a nice ride around town in that white van. Nah, you, you got know. away good. But I was kneeling because you know it's it's a. Yeah, van. But you know what it is, yo. Who okay, uh, uh, Honestly, uh, you're a great guy, and nah, cool. and and your karma and your and your, and, your, and your thing allows you to get away from anything because people know you're a good guy when they meet you. Yeah. And then unless it's on like all systems go, you know, it's it's like, you know, it, I, I know, I know I got friends like that that don't know what the fuck is going on. They could be shooting. They could be, <laughs> the cops could be coming. They could be car crap. They don't know what's going on. They're just like, <laughs> hey, what's going on, God? It's uh, ignorance is bliss. I just, I just wish I knew who the other guys were. I know they were all like Puerto Rican, but... <laughs> I, I I was I was kneeling in the van, but Pun was like, yo, come over here and sit next to me so I can tell you what you're going to do to fix this shit, right? So when I got up, the mixtape that I'm getting in trouble for falls out my jacket on the oh, floor of the van. God. All I hear is, Cate la boca. I'm screaming out. Like, I'm like, yo, y'all going to kill you. I was like, I'm going to die for a fucking song. Like, yo, I'm <laughs> I know it sounds funny as shit, but I, I, I yelled with them while they were screaming in Spanish. And then Pun was like, fuck out of here. Shut the door. Shut the door. Fuck out of here. And then he, he told a nigga, you know, he had he had some crazy niggas with him. But I don't know what they were saying. They was talking Spanish. I thought I was going to, I thought it was over. Like, it sounded like you're going to die now in Spanish, right? So I was like, yo, I started screaming with the guy. Like, <laughs> so... Pun shut the door, and then this is me and Pun talking. I, we spoke for like forty minutes. Told me everything. That's why I remember I was telling you about like you know like Latin Kings was like involved, like laughing at like he said street niggas was like it's deeper 
than a diss record because I don't want like street niggas thinking I'm soft. Like so, I, but now I know that you really don't know what the fuck is going on. You know what I'm saying? So he's mm -hmm. like, yo, I'm gonna let you leave. You know? I was like, yeah, I might. But he was like, yo. But he was like, yo, on the next mixtape, I want you to say fuck Jay Z, all this crazy shit, like. And I just was agreeing. Okay, with don't talk like that, man. Don't talk Bro. like that, man. No, but I, no, I'm just saying. I'm just telling you exactly what happened in the car. So I, I agree that whatever he said, he wanted me to do. You, you know just want to get the fuck out of. I'm going to get the fuck out the car. So no, I've been, said, there, I've been there. I, said, I, I did one time, one, and I went just to squash something, like it really ain't had nothing to do with me. Mm. That's over there by your way. And when I tell you, I showed up. They had every size gun you could think of pointed at me. Big Bro. ones, long ones, fat ones, <laughs> long, two shotters. This, like, yo, it was like the fucking Blues Brothers, bro. And I went over there to squash a beef. Like, like I went over there and I said, boom. And I said, yo, listen, guys. <laughs> I'm here in peace. I'm here to squash this. These guys are ready to come over here. And, and y'all ready? And it, no, it don't make no sense. And I actually, and there was one guy, I never forget him the rest of my life. He had these bifocals on. And he kept saying, fuck that. Fuck that. Give it to him. Fuck that. And I'm, yo, I hate that nigga, man, to this yeah. day. Like, I'm talking about 88. I'm talking about in the street streets. Mm. Long time ago. But I actually squashed the beef. And I got, obviously, I'm here. I got away from there. So I know, what, what, I know them situations. But you know, you know why I respect Terror Squad? Because when it was, when it was over, he said, Give me five minutes to leave. Give me five minutes, and then you can leave. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, all right. So I'm in the car. I finally get out. I get out the van. You know what I'm saying? So I totally forgot he told me to give him five minutes. So I get in my car, and me, I, I went with homies, too, but I didn't even tell my homies what happened. I didn't even tell them what. I said, yo, everything is good. Yo, everything's good. Like, I didn't want to tell niggas I was held up. Guns, you know, I, I was gonna look like a pussy, you know what I'm saying? So I, <laughs> I start driving and shit. I start driving, and then the van stopped now. And then, like, I don't know who the Spanish kid. The Spanish kid got out the van. He's like, "Yo, who kid? Give us five minutes." And I was like, "Oh shit!" So I reversed the car. I fucking damn near hit a dump, a, a dumpster. You know, we in a, a cul-de-sac in the Bronx. So I almost hit like I, I damn near hit a dumpster. I probably hit that shit. I don't even remember. Now like, you just gotta get out of there. No, but, it's but like, I not, know the feeling. No, nah, but I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I respect Terror Squad. Because when Pun left, there was two other Jeeps that came out the side as backup. Because they, because Pun didn't know who I was. So let's say if if my niggas would have got out the car to try to save me or pull out, Pun, Pun had two other cars with niggas ready to protect. You know or, that happened to me. That's you know, crazy. Oh. Uh, one time, I can't tell you who, right? It's not hip hop, but one time, uh, somebody I grew up with from the block, Billy Blanco from your way, um, and he violated my brother. It broke my heart because my brother ain't used to hang out with nobody. So my brother knew I was <laughs> cool with these guys, and he drove by, seen them, had a beer with them, and he violated my brother, right? So I was like, in my feelings. And so they knew. The fact that he probably was drunk or whatever, he violated my brother. They knew Joe's coming. Like, they, the whole, that side of town, that wasn't my hood, but, you know, we was cool with them, like brothers. But they knew crack is coming. Like, it's going down. It was a ghost town. I've never seen that project like that in my life. Oh, wow. And uh, I'll tell you exactly, it was Cortland Projects. And when I go through there, that shit was like a movie. Like, you could see Tumbleweed. <laughs> Nobody was out there. It was like a ghost town, B. So I come through this before rap. But I'll tell you a crazy story. So I turn around the next day. I'm all over looking for this dude. All over looking for this dude, right? So I see him on Webster Avenue. That's far from like Cortland and far from my hood. But I see him I'm like, yo, pull over, pull over. Pull over, yo, pull over. Like, like yo. Pull over, nigga, like, pull over, right? So when he pulls over, I jump on him, start hooking on him, 
We fighting. I'm, I'm not lying to y'all. Y'all know the truth. I beat the shit out of this. Beat the shit out of him. But he violated uh, my brother. So, but when I'm fighting him and I stop for a breather that I got him in the choke and I turn around, they had about a hundred guys from their projects with them. What? And so I made the mistake that you talking about with Pun. I jumped on him. He was in the first car. They had about 15 cars full of dudes. Nah, holy shit. And so, when, but but I knew them. I grew up with all of them. So they let me get the fair one. Thank God. Because when I turned around, it was about 150 guys around me. And once again, yo, I don't care where you at, even if you know each other, there's always one guy that says, fuck that. Give it to him. Give it to him. Fuck that. Like when Roy Jones came to beat me up. Wow, I forgot about when that. When Roy Jones came to beat me up, he had the guy chop a style with him. Chop a style. Chop, yeah. chop, chop. Wow. Chop a style. He had like 10 guys with him. Chop a style. I was like, give it to him, champ. Give it to him, champ. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, Yo. Yo it's always a guy throwing the battery in the back. You know, you know how I survived like 20-something years of like even being on the G unit? Um, when you, when you, I did over like 600 mixtapes. So I did almost everybody's shit. Uh, everybody who's a, who's a legend in the game or, you know, that mixtape shit kind of like saved my life because if these guys are legends, that means they fed their family. It, it, it goes down like, you know, the next kid, either their kids or their business, they got a new, because of like that one catalytic point in, in time that who kid did your mixtape? It's the same with drama, same with, you know, K Slay, all of us. We, you know, Clue, we have that 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 weird touch that in time, 10 years later, you will be big. So because I did that, you know, I didn't just want to do like G-Unit mixtapes only. And 50 Cent was cool with me doing everybody's shit. I did, you know, I introduced Snoop Dogg to mixtapes. I introduced this guy, that guy, T I am a T.I. down south. But I inherited like the protection service, like Macazo. Like when I used to go to Miami, 50 says this and Rick Ross, 50 says this and this guy. I had the DJ, I had a residency at Live, you know? But I don't roll, I don't roll with security and all that crazy shit. So I call Macazo. I'd be like, yo, Macazo, man. I interviewed a nigga live on air. And then he said, yo, anybody touch who kid? You know, hey, there's a red button. But it's not even, <laughs> it's, not, it's not just Macazo. If I go to the West Coast, because I, you know, I, I found the game. I found, you know, I, you know, I inherit Bloods, Crips. It's it's crazy. You go to Chicago, I inherit like everybody that I've worked with, even Toronto, Canada, all across the world, London. I'm like, yo, I used to do clubs in London, and you know they rob everybody in London, but they'll always give me the pass because I did gigs mixtape, I did Skepta. All these guys you see that's big now, and you fuck with them. I did the tape, so it, it it gave me like this, like I don't know, like a, and I'm not I'm not a tough guy. You know? No, I I'm gave you a jail guy. out of get out of jail free card. Yeah, I'm a smart guy, and so I have all these like people that just want to protect me and just don't fuck with me because it don't make no sense. Like, what are you gonna prove? You know, if I don't fuck, if I fuck with you, then I deserve it. But I'm not that guy. Who kid? You know? What's next for who kid? Oh my God! You know, God is a DJ. I got my book coming out, so. You know, it's gonna be kind of crazy. I, I'm right. I'm, I'm I'm finishing up. I'm on my last chapter of my book, too. My first book ever. Wow. I, you know, I'm reading that. I, you know, I, oh I, no, I, that's a that's a must read. That's a blockbuster film, New York Times seller. Like this shit coming out crazy. <laughs> nah, it's a legendary. Oh, and they think they wait. heard all my stories. They ain't hear them stories yet. Wow. I cannot wait. Like. I beg you, like, I beg all the time. It's like I beg 50 for the G-Unit movie, but, you know, maybe he's waiting for a certain time to put it out. I beg you for the Terror Squad movie. You know, NWA came out. You know, Snoop Dogg got his own shit he's doing now. I want to see, like, the real behind-the-scenes story. Even even Ice-T. I want to see, like, the Ice-T movie, you know? Ice-T played a lot of focal points and a lot of key things. But Oh, yeah, he was in there. Shout-out to DJ Camillo on the check-in. You see what I'm saying? Like, Shit like, yo, Camillo, that's like, you know, but me being a DJ's DJ, 
you got to be full 360 in it. And, you, and that's why me and you, like, connect. We, we're, we're, like, like-minded dealing with this business. Because if, if, if loyalty ain't first, and there's not nobody out there that can say that I fucked them over. So I'm going to just be chilling for the rest of my life. Until yeah, I that's what I do. I just judge people by uh, my experience with them, how well they do business, their loyalty. You know, I you know it, I find it hard somebody talking bad about rich player when mm. I know that rich player I've seen rich player do a million deals and he's always been straight up. So you got this one bad apple trying to talk shit about rich player. I can't believe that guy. And I don't know how people are so quick to believe these kind of people. Like I go back to the I'm really disturbed with the with the with 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 the YouTube shit. Yeah. Of if there's a guy, there's an OG unit guy that's talking his shit, and, and then there's an old Rockefeller one, there's a Terror Squad one, there's a these are all bums that were once down, fucked up, made the wrong choice, mm. and now they on there in their soul life. They all, as a man. These are people that got kids and all that. That their own they, all they're doing is they're on YouTube. Trying to diss it like I didn't I, I I didn't know this world exists. Look, even Sammy the Bull, right? I saw a little clip on Instagram of what's my man, Fat Man Scoop. Yeah. Like Fat Man Scoop, Sav, Sav, his brother is my brother. I love Fat Man Scoop too. But he's he's crossed the line, bro. Interviewing Sammy the Bull and shit like that. Like, oh, yo, come God. on. Like, I mean, what everybody want the clout, like. Like, it's some shit you can't do, man. And it's like, and Sammy the Boy, get up there, and he, he, this guy told, and he's about 100 years old, and he's like, yeah, because I said if John did anything wrong, I'd clip him. I just like, yo, my man, get the fuck out of here with that. And he fucking do this telling some weird-ass story, and we got to accept it for what they talking about. That's why you, my that, that's why I think that's part, one of the reasons why you respect my radio show because my radio show don't consist of like you know bringing like street shit into the shit. I just want people to come in, enjoy themselves. They tell me what they want to tell me, but even if I know what the fuck happened, even if I know for a fact this happened, you gotta you gotta tell me. I'm not I'm I'm I never had a radio show that involved clout. And and I I will make fun of niggas from shit that they publicly got going on, but I'm not gonna like well on because I, I have respect. I'm like old school where I respect like the streets need to stay in the streets. And if you come in my show, that's why a lot of people are comfortable with me. They know who kid is not gonna put me in no wild in, in an uncomfortable position. Yeah, that's man. how I get down too. Yeah, Over here, it's all out of love. It ain't about the low hanging fruit. It ain't about jamming somebody up. Or, yeah, or like, like, I don't get down like that. Not they, on this show. Yeah, they, they do it for the views. They do it because, like, you know, they make money. Yeah, but I, don't, I just don't get it. Like, I, I, I'm like, I'm like, I just don't get, like, grown men chasing, uh, grown men chasing somebody, you know. And then and then the thing threw me for a loop, man. I love Fat Man Scoopy. He's been the sweetest guy. Mm -hmm. I know him since the first time I ever rapped. And, but I, I know he's the civilian. He's a, but I wouldn't give that guy that type of time. Yeah. It's like when, you know, they was trying to get Elliot Wilson. They was trying to get at me uh, about this other guy. I don't want to even say his name. That he told that he came out and they were begging me. Joe, talk to him. He wants to break the silence. And this dude was getting 2 million views on this thing. I was like, oh, no, he can't talk to me, bro. Nah. And I don't even think they want me to talk to me because I don't think they want me to break it down like they, they don't want me in it. Like none of these guys mm. want to do this. What I'm doing with you about some real street shit. They don't want to do it. It's like, you know, you know I, I talk like me and Akon is really cool, but, you know, I understand why streets. I, I, I understand all that stuff. But it's like it's another guy I love that made a poor de decision. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just I know how to balance the shit. You know, like we're we're in the business, but if if we jump in it, 
you got to expect all this stupid shit. Like you, you gotta be, you gotta be stamped just like yeah. the situation. You know, like I don't know. Maybe I'm blessed, who kid? Because we always got a large audience. And yeah, people, we uh, good. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know why these guys who I respect and I love do these little corny shits, like little corny moves for clout chasing. And all that, and I'd be like, damn, man, why the fuck he do that? Like, and I mean it. I'm not saying it in the wrong way. I'm not talking about that, man, school. I'm just saying everybody, people we know be doing some real clout chasing shit. And I'll be like. There's so much shit to do, though. Like, there's so much shit to interview. There's so much shit to, like, put out. Like, I'm with Hulk Hogan this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm with Ric Flair. Yo, listen, I need Hulk's number. You know that's my man. Yo, I'm with that nigga, like, in another, like, 20 minutes. All right, but that's my guy, him and his son. But I need his number because I really want him on oh, the show. Oh, I'll get it. I'll get it for you today. I'll you know, I was it. there when his wife told him she wanted a divorce. Oh, yeah, you did tell me that wild story. Yeah. Well, that's a real story. He was I crying was and shit. That nigga was crying, right? Cried on my shoulder, the holster. Damn. They don't fucking believe what I say. Who okay? <laughs> They think I be lying and shit. They don't know who I know. <laughs> Hulk Hogan crying on my shoulder. I'm going to tell him when he come on the show. Like, he'll say, yes. Yes, Joe, I wasn't a jabroni. I was hurt. You know, I, he'll tell him. Bro, I will get that for you. Like, I'll be with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I need that. So when you get with him, hit me up, my brother. Yo, God bless. Be safe out there. Keep that mask on. Hell yeah, I got my... Yo, I've been wearing this way before COVID. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've been... <laughs> Always doing this shit, but... Yo, I ain't gonna lie. You know who I used to see all the time? That kid, Bad Bunny? Always yeah, he, had a mask on. I never knew what it was. Time. He knew what it was ahead of time. Bro. Is that, is that Illuminati shit, man? We, we gotta talk about that shit. Get out of here. Y'all be safe out there. One love, who kid? One love, Stay bro. Love. You don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. Next week, I'll turn up again. Legendary. Test move if you there. I'm not doing it tonight. And I was trying to tell y'all, Limby official, I'm getting the cut, guys. If this shit look too dark or whatever, my barber's on his way. This shit is too thick and all that. Fuck that. And my shit will be proper tomorrow. Um, What an interview. Oh, my God. You don't know who I know. What a fucking interview. Tone Sunshine. And so... Today, I don't feel so good, and I'm going to tell you why. Today, you know, I have a large sneaker collection. I don't know if you know it. Some people collect cars. Some people collect jewelry. Some people collect whatever. And Fat Joe been collecting sneakers for like 25 years. And I have sneakers that I'm the only one that has them. I have sneakers that are so rare, you know, they're numbered. I have TS's, Jordans, and Air Force, and all that. And But I'm building a new home, and I can't bring my old, because pretty much, to me, it's my collection. To my wife and my daughter, is my junk. So to them, they think I'm hoarding. It ain't like I'm collecting sneakers. They look at it as, yo, my dad's a hoarder. Y'all, Ted, smooth. The people love you. Y'all, Ted, don't do that, Ted. The people love you. Yo, Ted. If you do, you got to save it. Then... Y'all, Ted, don't do that, Ted. Ted, don't do that. It's Terrell's birthday. Um, so anyway, guys, it's very uh, critical that I even came on here today for you guys. And... Uh, and so, oh shit, tell them Blanco sent you in the, on the joints. I wear size 12. And so, my man 2Js came from, from Vegas. And he's going through, so I have like, what is it, three car garage just with yeah. sneakers? Yeah. And so it looks like Foot Locker or Up NYC. Um, and so I've been collecting. There's sneakers, there are boxes that said 1998. There's boxes that say 2002. There's boxes that say, this shit, I forgot what I got. I know I got 
Like, sure, somebody got a better collection, but I mean, you really got to go looking hard. Yeah, we'll be back next week, Ted. Ted, uh, um, I'm not feeling good today. And so, emotionally drained. Emotionally drained. And so I sat out there, and two J's was going through every box, and he got halfway through. Um, he got to come back and go through the other half. And, and so I'm in my feelings. And so I'm over it. Like, I'm, like you know, I'm good. I did it. 20-something years, king of the sneakers. I'm still going to keep maybe a 20 clip in case somebody want to think that I got rid of my collection and want to play with me. Zion just broke the rim. Zion just broke the rim. Zion on TV just broke the rim. <laughs> uh, and y'all know I'm a, a Zion groupie. Uh, and so Maya, yeah, Maya's laughing. Maya did it first. And Maya went and got rid of some of his sneakers with two J's. I said, man, I need to do that. And because it's just, it's hoarding. And I don't have it nice. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't have it like classy. No, it's not organized. I don't have, it's not organized. It's just. It will be now. And so I'm like, every sneaker he pulls out, I remember when I bought it. Every sneaker he pulls out, I'm like, oh my God. And just going through emotions and with Jules, but uh, we're going to film it. We're going to film it. And then y'all going to get your chance at Fat Joe's Sneaky Collection. If you size 12, it's the best day of your life. Because I got shit nobody got. No question. And, uh, and it was so much fun because, you know, when I started sneaker collecting, and now you see the kids on the line and all that, well, they doing it for reselling. They doing it for different reasons. You know, me, when I was going on, back in the days, I would be on tour. I would pull up in Minnesota, wherever, Philly, UK. Mom and pop store. Mom and pop stores. I would go into the bummiest store and throw 10000 on the on the counter. Go downstairs. And be like, yo, can I go downstairs? And they be like, yo, but it's rusty, water's leaking, it's garbage downstairs. And I'd be like, no, I just want to go downstairs because they didn't know about the sneaker collecting yet. Hidden and I would go in there and get hidden gems. I would go get shacks and go get uh, retro Barcelona's retro sneak. And I did that everywhere. Everywhere. And so my collection ain't just a regular collection. I got some shit. And uh, and so it's going to, you know, most of it is going up. Two J's will put it up. And um, and so you'll get a piece of the Fat Joe collection for all the sneaker collectors out there. You'll get, you know, a lot of TS Air Force One, a lot of Jordan TS, uh, you know, Jordans with the TS uh, from... <laughs> From from Jordan, not no custom shit, not that, like real shit. And so, um, put God first. I'll see you guys Monday. Um, Wild Cherry Pepsi. God is the greatest. Believe in God. He's always with you. Day City Choppers, what's up, baby? We gotta do one. Soon. Tesso verse. We got to do one soon. All right, guys. Peace. The biggest show in the game.